Hey everyone, Alex from CNC Orama here, and today we're going to talk about programming a bar puller for a CNC lathe. So a bar puller does just that. It grabs your bar, it pulls it out, so every time you cut off a part, it saves you the hassle of having to manually pull it out or potentially even having to reset your work offset. So as the example today, we're going to look at the Accudine Easy Puller. But uh, the logic we're going to use to program this should be able to apply to a bunch of different styles of bar pullers. So follow along and see how we do this. All right, so I'm here at the Accudine website looking at the model that we have. And the first thing I want to do is just look at the description in this model. So it has a range of 0.093 to 1.75 for round stock. So they have different models that are available for different size of stock, but it's just really important that you do not exceed the size of stock that it's capable of clamping on. So Accudine on their website gives some instructions and some good tips on how to program this, and they even give us a program that we can use. Um, but I don't want to have to write a program every time I use this. And so we're going to look at how to do this with just one line of code at the end of your program. So before we start writing our program, we first need to write out our logic. And I've written out 12 steps here. Um, we're going to move to a safe location for a tool change because we have to actually change to the tool that's doing the bar pull. And then, of course, change to the correct tool. And then we're going to take that tool and we're going to position in Z near the chuck jaws. And then we want to come close to the part in X and engage the bar puller onto the bar. Then we need to unclamp the chuck, wait for the chuck to unclamp, move in Z positive the correct distance. Um, and this is really important. This number varies. Depending on your part, you're going to pull a different amount every time. All right. And then, of course, we need to reclamp the chuck, disengage the bar puller, move to a safe location and then return the main program. All right, so we got the logic down. Now we need to figure out how we're gonna call this program and we wanna run it as a sub-program. So we might first look at M98. M98 allows you to call up a program, a separate program in your controller, run through that program and then jump back to the main program where you, from where you called the sub-program. So your sub-program needs to be saved into the controller before you can call it. That's very important. So let's look at how M98 works. So um, let's. this is just an example. We have a program number 01234. And then uh, let's say we call G54 and then call M98 P8000. So that's going to search through our controller, find program number 08000 and run that. So again, we'll, we'll be activate G54, call program 8000, and then 8000 just says blah, blah, blah. Obviously, we would have some useful code in that subprogram. And then M99 is what tells the program to jump back to the program from which it was called. So M99 will jump back to the, the next line in this program. And then we're doing the same thing. We'll call G55 now, call that subprogram, run all the way through it, jump back to the next line, and blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. And then our main program has an M30 at the end, which is where it will end the program. All right, so we're ready to start writing our subprogram. And just to start, I call this 08010. Um, the reason I picked 8010 is there's a convention where on a lot of machines, the, the 9000 programs are locked up. You can't overwrite those. And those are used for stuff like probing and kind of advanced operations that are also called as a subprogram, but you don't want the risk of accidentally deleting those programs. There's also 8,000 programs, 08,000 programs, 
And those are kind of similar, but those are reserved for programs that you might create yourself, like this kind of thing. So that's why I picked 8010, because it was just available, and it starts with an A. It kind of makes sense, following that logic. I copied and pasted all the, the logic that we came up with earlier into here and made these all comments. This will tell us what we need to do, basically. So I'm going to move to a safe lo location for a tool change. So I'm going to do a G0. I use G53, X0, Z, negative 8. So this is kind of specific to your machine. This is the spot where you're going to do your tool changes. Some people send your machine all the way home. This is far enough in most cases from the chuck and from the tailstock where uh, we're generally safe on our machine. Change to correct tool. So we're using tool 11. Oops. So I'm going to do T1111. So that's for tool 11, offset 11. Okay, position in Z near the chuck jaws. All right, this one takes a little bit of figuring out. So how do you how do you always get near the chuck jaws? So if we're using G54, I usually put G54 at the end of my stock, and my stock can vary in length. So G54 isn't really consistent from part to part. So what I came up with is if we use a different work offset, let's do G59 here, position in Z near the chuck jaws. So G59, Z0. And G0 is still active, so this is going to be a rapid move. Okay, come close to the part in X. So that's a little vague. What does close mean? So we know, um, I think the biggest stock I could hold with or grab with this bar puller is 1.75. So I'm going to just pick a number that's bigger than that. So we'll do X4. On a lathe, all these numbers are diameter numbers. So if, it is, if it's at X4, that means we're two inches from the center line, basically. Okay, engage the puller onto the bar. So um, uh, everything up until now has been a rapid move. We want to have a little more control when we're doing this. So I'm going to switch to a G1. And we want to go to X0. So I'm calling X0 on this tool the position where it's engaged onto the bar. And we'll do a feed rate of 100. That's inches per minute. And a lot of times, most of the time on a lathe, you're doing inches per revolution. I'm going to do a G98 also on this line, just to guarantee that we're working in inches per minute. Engage the puller onto the bar. And the reason I picked 100 inches per minute on the Accudyne website, they, they said faster is usually better than slower. So to me, 100 inches per minute seems relatively fast for what we're doing, and after experimenting, it works well. Okay, unclamp the chuck. That's going to be an M11. Okay, wait for chuck to unclamp. So if we just tell the chuck to unclamp and then tell the Z to move, the, the Z might start moving before the chuck has fully released the part, which would be bad. So we can do a G4, P1. And that'll uh, allow us one second to wait. And there are some different conventions with G4. Sometimes you don't leave a decimal place and uh, P is 1000. I've seen also a U, depends on your controller, but we're on a Haas lathe here and this will work. This will give us a one second delay. If we want to move a set amount, I feel like an incremental move is the best way to do this. So. An incremental Z move on most lays is done with a W command instead of a Z. So for now, let's just assume we're going to pull it two inches. So I'll do W2 with a decimal point. And we're going to come back to this because this is a problem. This number varies. Clamp the chuck. That's an M10. Disengage bar puller. So basically, we want to move off the bar in the X direction. So Maybe I'll do go back to X4, move to a safe location. So I'm going to just do the same 
thing we had up here, I can actually just copy and paste this. And then return to main program. We already have an M99 here, but let me just um, put it here. And then we actually need a percent symbol at the end here. Okay, so we jumped over a little issue with our M98. And that issue is we want to be able to pull the stock a different amount every time. And that M98 has a hard coded two inches in there. So we could go in and just change that two inches to whatever distance we want to pull it every time. But there's actually a better way to do that, and that's by using a G65. So G65 works just like M98, except you can pass a value into that subprogram. So basically what we have over here are our variables that we can use in our G65. So on our G65 P call, if we use an A 3.5, that variable becomes variable number one in our subprogram. If you use a B, it's number two. If you use a C, it's number three, which, you know, that kind of makes sense. And then it jumps from D. A D is a number seven when you get to the subprogram. B is an eight. So it um, doesn't follow perfect logic, but these are actually the variables that you're going to be using um, in your G65 calls. So let's look back at our program here. And I'm just going to get rid of all this M98 stuff. And let's just say all we have in our main program is a G65 P8010. And then I'm going to put an A next to that. So uh, in this case, I'll pull it two inches. All right, so we're, we're pulling two inches here. That's a hard-coded number. So what I need to do is just change this to number one. So this A2 is being passed to the subprogram when we call the subprogram. And when we get to the subprogram, that value becomes the variable number one. Okay, so there's one more thing I want to, I want to safe proof this a little bit. In G code, you use uh, brackets instead of parentheses because parentheses are what are used for comments here. So I want to do the absolute value of this, ABS. And I'm going to do these double brackets just to be safe. Oops. So by doing an absolute value here, I can safe proof this that I might accidentally, for some reason, put in a negative symbol in there. This is always going to pull in the Z positive direction. So I even have this in my comment here. I always want to pull in the Z positive direction. So that's why by making this an absolute value, it's always going to be positive. And then one other thing that can be helpful, I'm going to put an M1, an optional stop up at the top. I think this is something that is just kind of standard right before a tool change, especially. I also want to put a comment on the same line with the O number. This is usually visible in the directory, so let's call this uh, bar pull macro. So I want the front face of the wheel on the bar puller to be my tooltip as in the Z direction. So I'm going to touch that off just like I would a drill. I offset the Y before probing just so it would contact the wheel at the correct spot and not break the probe. So that takes care of my Z offset on the tool. I also need to do the X offset on the tool. So for this one, this is the X offset. I'm going to eyeball where the two wheels look like they're more or less centered on the part. So at this point, I want to go back into the controller and set my X offset on the tool at this location. So on most machines, you'll, it'll ask you what the diameter is at that point. I'm going to say zero. So that means um, as far as the controller is concerned, this is my X zero on this tool. And if you remember, when we engaged the polar with the G code, we did go to X0 to engage it. Now keep in mind, for different diameters of workpiece, 
you might have to adjust that X offset just a little bit because the two arms are going to kind of have some variance in where they move to with a larger piece. So you can see in my video that the work piece kicks off to the side a little bit when the chuck jaw is open. That's because my X offset is not quite right. Now that I have the tool offsets fully defined, I can do my work offset, which is G59. So I'm just going to eyeball near the chuck, but not so close it's going to hit. So what we're doing here is we're using G59 only for this tool because we always want the tool to come near the chuck jaws. And regardless of where our G54 is, we always want that tool to come to the same place to grab the part and pull it. So before we run this, there's a few tips. You want to have your chuck jaws not open too far, so kind of uh, keep them at the small end of the opening on the adjustment. You also want to have a spindle liner in your spindle, so that minimizes any chances for the stock kicking off to the side, as you saw in my video. So you also want to test run it well in front of the part where you're safe. So you should move your G59 several inches in front of the chuck jaw and just test and make sure everything looks right. We can test the code by calling our G65 from MDI directly. Lastly, move the G59 where it should be, close to the chuck jaws, but don't actually have it grab a bar of stock. Then finally, if everything else looks good, you hopefully can try it out. So I have a simple program, and at the end it has a parting tool path with tool number five. So let's go down and look. So all we need to do to make this bar pole itself is do uh, G65, P8010, oops, and then we need an A value, and it may you may wonder what that A value needs to be. What that needs to be is the, uh, the Z value where we actually do our cutoff. So this is a fairly small part, so the Z is negative 0.8881, and then put that number in right here, right before your M30. Okay, so keep in mind that things vary from machine to machine. There's so many variables that could make this not work for you. So just be super careful, and it's, it's totally on you if something goes wrong, unfortunately, but you got it. You got to understand what's going on with your own machine. So I hope I at least gave you enough information that you can make this work for yourself, but don't just copy exactly what I did because something might be wrong. Okay, so this video focused on the easy puller, which comes in from the side, engages into the stock, pulls it, and then retracts also from the side. So I know there's a lot of bar pullers that come in from the front, grab the part, pull it. So it's going to be a different motion, but I'm hoping you can at least follow my logic enough to modify your code to work with any kind of bar puller that you have. All right, so I really appreciate you watching this video. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, and stay tuned for future videos. Thank you.